Hello and welcome to this video lesson. In this video lesson, we will be looking at one example which deals with projectile motion. In this question, we get a skier that leaves the horizontal end of a ramp with velocity of 30 meters per second. And we're given that the height of the drop is 10 meters, and we want to calculate how far the skier lands from the base of the ramp in the horizontal direction. The first step in solving these type of questions that is recommended for me is to draw a system diagram. So let's do that first. In this case, we get a ramp that comes and then we get a horizontal section as it says in the question. And we basically get a skier who is jumping from this. And I'm just gonna do a little drop here and eventually the skier is gonna land somewhere. So I'm gonna draw the skier's final position right here. The next step is to write down all the information that we have. So basically some of the stuff that we're looking at is the velocity, final and initial. We're looking at displacements. We are looking at acceleration and change in time. Let's start with the velocities. For velocity one, the object is moving in this direction and we're gonna fill it out for both the x direction and the y direction. In the x direction, the velocity is given to us as 30 meters per second. And in the y direction, because of this hint that we have, it says the skier leaves the horizontal end of the ramp, meaning as they're coming down, they're just going to go down, and then all of a sudden, due to gravity, they're going to stop dropping. So the horizontal velocity is 30 meters but initially in the y direction, they have no velocity. They're not, they're not pushing up or pushing down to get certain momentum in that direction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna label v1, y as zero meters per second. Next thing I usually do is the displacements. So we're gonna have a displacement in the x direction. So from the beginning here, I'm gonna go down and I, I do this as a vector, so you can see in terms of direction, I'm labeling my direction here downwards, and I'm not putting a vector sign here anymore because I have the direction here. And here, in the x direction, I'm going in the right direction, and velocity in the y direction is going down. My displacement is also going to go down, and I'm gonna label that as delta dx dy is equal to and I have the value, it's 10 meters. I don't know what my delta t is, so I'm gonna put a question mark there. And for v2, I know that my velocity two is going to be somewhere, he uh, somewhere in the final position. So I'm gonna put v2y is equal to question mark, it's not given to us. And v2x, uh, we know that it's going to be the same as velocity 1 in the x direction because we're going to assume that there's no air resistance and therefore there's nothing that's actually slowing our object or our skier as they're falling in the x direction. In the y direction, there's gravity that's pulling it down, but in the x direction, there's nothing that's actually slowing it down. So v2x is same as v1x which is equal to 30 meters per second. In terms of accelerations, we have an acceleration downwards. Acceleration here, um, acceleration here is equal to 9.81. And in the horizontal direction, acceleration is equal to zero because again, there's no force or air resistance that's actually slowing the skier down. Finally, the last thing that we haven't labeled yet is dx and that's how far the object gets and or our skier gets in this case and that's a question mark as well. Looking back, we wanna make sure that we've labeled everything. V1 in the x direction and y directions are labeled. V2 in the x and y directions are labeled. Delta D is labeled in x and y, acceleration, x and y, I will have to write 
that this one is y and this one is x. And finally, delta t. Delta t is special in projectile motions, projectile motion, just because it's shared between both x and y directions. So I'm not going to put an x or y in here. I'm just going to write that we don't know what the delta t was between stage one and two. We don't know how long it took for the skier to fall at the moment, but we know that uh, the x direction and the y direction, it took the exact same time. Once I have all my information, then I can start looking at what equations I need to use to solve what I'm looking for. Uh, and this side over here, there's a little cheat sheet on all the equations of the five equations of kinematic equations when we have a constant acceleration. In this case, we do have a constant acceleration in the y direction because we know that the only acceleration is due to gravity. Uh, in the x direction, we know that the acceleration is zero. And since acceleration is zero, we know that we have a constant velocity. Therefore, for constant velocity, v average is equal to delta dx over delta t. And that's the only equation that we need for the x direction. Let's put a check mark beside all the information that we have. We got in the y direction. Actually, let's do the x direction first. In the x direction, I'm um, just looking at v average delta delta dx and delta t. I don't have delta t. I can see that that's a question mark here. I don't have delta dx. So basically, I can't find what I'm looking for at the moment, which is the horizontal um, the displacement from the horizontal direction. Uh, I do have the average, but I will need delta t in order to find the displacement in the x direction. So if I can't solve things in the x direction, I have to move on to the y direction and see if I have enough information to solve for what I'm looking for. I know that I need delta t from here, so I will need to find this. So let's see if I have enough information in the y direction. In the y direction, I'm going to use orange. I have v1y. I have delta dy, and I have the acceleration. Whenever you have three sets of information, you can always find the other two. In this case, what I want to look for is delta t, so that then once I find that delta t, I'm going to plug it into this equation and find my delta dx. Let's do that. Looking at my equations uh, here, uh, I want delta d in it, I want v1 in it, I want acceleration in it, and I want delta t. What I don't want is v2y, because at the moment we're not really looking for that. So that's the v final. This equation has v final. This equation has v final. This one doesn't have v final, and it does have delta d, initial velocity, delta t, and acceleration. That's the equation I'm going to use. The equation is delta d is equal to v1 delta t plus half a delta t squared. And I have forgotten to, u to choose a coordinate system. So for my coordinate system, since I know that most of the stuff that I've drawn are pointing downwards, I'm going to use down as positive. And in the horizontal direction, most of the stuff are move, are pointing to the right. So right here on the top corner, I'm going to use right and down to be my positive. That's going to make things a lot easier if I choose these to be my positive direction. I'm also going to mention that these calculations are for my y direction. So everything I do in orange is going to be for my y direction. Okay, I know that, let's actually plug in the numbers. I know that my delta d is 10 meters. I'm going to put positive 10 because the direction from stage 1 to 2 is going downwards, and that's consistent with my positive direction. The velocity is going to be, z velocity 1 is going to be 0, and that's going to cross out that whole term because 0 times anything is 0. And this is equal to 1 half, the acceleration, which is 9.81. I'm using a positive value for, nine point, uh, for the acceleration because it's pointing down, and that's consistent with my coordinate system. 
And finally, we're multiplying that by delta t squared. I'm going to rearrange for delta t squared. I'm going to get 2 times 10 divided by 9.81. Using my calculator, delta t squared is going to be 2.0387. And delta t, taking the square root of both sides, is going to be plus or minus 1.4278 but I'm only going to take the positive just because the change in time cannot equal to a negative number. 2, 7, 8, since delta t is bigger than or equal to 0. Now that I have found my delta t, I can go back to this equation and see if I have enough information to find my change in the x direction. V average, I know that the velocity in the x direction doesn't change, so that stays as 30 meters per second. And now I have my delta t value, which is the time it takes for the skier to drop from the location 1 to location 2. And I have the two pieces of information, and I have one equation and one unknown, and therefore I can solve for delta dx. I'm going to rearrange this equation, and I'm going to do it in the color green here, delta dx is equal to V average multiplied by delta T. Delta dx is equal to, uh, the V average value here is 30, and the delta T is 1.4278. And when I'm calculating, I'm going to use the exact value that I got on my calculator uh, for the time. And once I plug everything in, and I multiply this by 30, or the time by 30, I will get 42.835 dot 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 um, meters. And to write my value properly, I'm going to write delta dx is equal to and I'm looking for number of significant figures that I need to use. In this case, I use there is three significant figures given here three that are given here, and I used 9.81 as three significant figures as well. So my final answer should also have three significant figures. So it will be 42.8, and I don't have to round the 8 up because the next value here is 3. My vector should also include a direction. So when I write this out, this is 42.8. My unit is meter. And in terms of direction, it's going in the right direction, which is obviously consistent with my vector here. I also have to make sure that this is a rounded value. So I'm going to use an estimation mark. And you can use estimation as this symbol or this symbol, uh, or whenever you round it, you want to make sure that you're not saying that it's exactly equal to this, but it's actually a rounded value. So in this case, my I have found what my change in the position is in the x direction. So that's my displacement in the x direction, and that's how far the person has moved horizontally from stage one to stage two, which is uh, the time, well, which is during the time he took to drop the 10 meters distance. Just a very quick review on how we went on to solve this question. The first thing we did is we drew a diagram which explains all the informations that information that I have. So basically, in this case. I included that v1 in the x direction is 30, v1 in the y direction is 0, and then my displacement in the y direction is 10, displacement in the x direction I don't know, acceleration in the x direction is 0, acceleration in the y direction is 9.81. My velocity, my final velocity in x direction is the same as my initial because there's nothing slowing it down. And in the y direction, I don't actually know. And finally, delta t, which is which doesn't have x or y direction between the two stages, it will be the same for x as it is for y, and that was also unknown. The next thing I did in the y direction, I had three sets of information. I had the dy, 
I had, yeah, I had the displacement in the y direction, I had the initial velocity, and I had the acceleration, and I used one of these five equations to find the delta t, because whenever you have three pieces of information, you can always find the other two. And once I found delta t, I know that in the x direction I have no acceleration and therefore I can always use this equation which states that average velocity is equal to the change in dis change in position over time or displacement over time and I had found out the time I have the velocity given to me in the question and I just rearranged the formula to find the displacement in the x direction.